Hello everyone. Welcome to Prayogik Uno, your personal electronics lab. In this video, let's look at how to get started with Prayogik Uno and also the pinout details of the hardware. Step 1. Insert Prayogik Uno on top of Arduino Uno. Before pressing the board completely, make sure the pins have gone halfway through on both the sides. And then you press the board. Step 2. Now, connect the USB OTG cable to the Arduino USB cable. Connect one end of the USB cable to Arduino and the other end of the OTG cable to your mobile. At this point, your hardware should turn on. The red light which is on indicates that the power is coming to the module. Step 3. Search for Prayogik Uno in Google Play Store and install the app. After installation, update your profile information and you should be at the home screen as shown here. Step 4. Now press Uno firmware button and press update firmware. The app intimates you once the firmware download is complete. In case you had used your Arduino Uno for a different project, make sure to update the firmware again before using Prayogik Uno. Press my lab button and now you are all set to start using your personal electronics lab. Before we explore the features of the app, let's look at the hardware details. As you can see, There are headers around the board that are numbered from 1 to 6. This is header number 1. This is number 2, 3, 4, 5 5 and 6. Apart from these headers, there are two headers that are exclusively dedicated for testing digital circuits. These are named as inputs and outputs. You can test all the digital ICs using these two headers. As I mentioned that Prayogik Uno provides quick access to different lab equipments. Let's have a look how to use them. First is oscilloscope. Pins AN1 and AN2 in header number 4 provide access to oscilloscope. Bandwidth of this oscilloscope is 20 kHz and voltage of signals up to 10 volts peak to peak can be measured. In case you need to measure higher voltage signals you can use an external voltage divider and measure now let's look at how to use signal generator pins sg1 and sg2 in header 6 provide a two channel signal generator connect the provided aux cable to the audio jack on the module and the other end connect to the phone Make sure the volume is at max position to get the highest amplitude range. To check the signal generator, connect a wire from pin SG1 in header number 6 to pin AN1 in header number 4 and connect another wire from pin SG2 in header number 6 to pin AN2 in header number 4. Now press the signal generator button. and select a amplitude value and frequency value for each channel you should be able to see the corresponding waves on the oscilloscope now let's have a look at voltmeter and variable voltage source pin var v in header 1 provides a variable voltage source both in positive and negative range pin volt in header 4 helps us to measure voltage at any point now let's measure the variable voltage with the use of the voltmeter we have on the board just connect a wire from pin var v in header 1 to the pin volt in header 4 now turn on this switch on the android app which is beside volt 
you should be able to read the variable voltage that is provided by var v pin you can use this potentiometer to adjust the required voltage you can also connect the volt pin to any voltage between plus 12 to minus 12 volts and read the corresponding voltage for example you can connect the volt pin to the 5 volt supply and read the corresponding voltage here now let's check how to measure resistance pin res in header 4 helps us to measure resistance value so you just need to place a resistor between the pin res and plus 5 volts and you can directly measure the resistance on the android app let's see how it's done just place a resistor between the pin res and the 5 volts and turn on the switch here and you should be able to see the corresponding resistance value here in header 1 there are two pins named as SCL and SDA these are the pins for I2C protocol firmware support for I2C protocol will be provided in future releases once the support is available you will be able to connect sensors and monitor them the next set of pins in header 2 are SCK MISO, MOSI and SS. These are part of SPI interface. Similar to I2C, support will be provided in future releases. Now, let's look into the pins that are used in testing and measuring digital signals. In header 2, there is a pin named CLK which stands for clock. This pin provides a clock signal and the frequency of the signal can be controlled from the Android app. We shall look at how to use this pin in the following section which describes the logic analyzer feature. Priyogic Uno provides a two-channel logic analyzer which can be further expanded to four channels. The hardware pins for the logic analyzer are in header number 3. They are named DG1, DG2, DG3 and DG4. As currently only two channels are supported, please use only the pins DG1 and DG2. Now, let's see the clock signal and logic analyzer features together. Connect a wire from pin CLK in header 2 to pin DG1 in header 3. To observe the logic analyzer output, press run button on the app to start the oscilloscope. Now double tap on the oscilloscope screen. You can notice that with just a double tap on the oscilloscope screen, you can switch between analog oscilloscope and logic analyzer. Now if I connect a sine wave to the analog oscilloscope with just a double tap, I will be able to shift between the analog section as well as the digital section here. The frequency of the clock signal can be controlled by using these buttons on the app. Typical use cases for logic analyzer are to see the outputs of a counter circuit and also to measure PWM signals. Measurements of the signals like T on, T off, duty cycle as well as frequency are automatically measured and displayed on the screen for the user. Below the clock pin in header 2, there is a pin named Mono. This pin represents Monopulse. Every time you press the Mono button on the app, a pulse will be generated on the Mono pin. Let's connect the Mono pin to a LED and verify this. You can see that on every button press, there is a pulse generated at the mono pin. Typically, you can use the mono pulse signal in counter circuits to single step through the count sequence. It can also be used to provide interrupts for microcontrollers. Now, let's look at how to test digital circuits. 
I have used 7408 which is a AND gate IC for this example. Connect plus 5 volts from header number 4 to pin number 14 of the IC. Connect ground pin from header number 6 to pin number 7 of the IC. Pin numbers 1 and 2 are the inputs for the AND gate. So let me connect two inputs from the input header. So here I have connected two inputs from the input port to the two inputs of the AND gate. Pin number 3 on the IC is the output of the AND gate. So let's connect this output to the output port on the board. I have connected a wire from pin number 3 to the output port. You can change the logic level of the inputs by toggling these switches on the app. 0, 0 is 0, the LED is off. 0, 1 is 0, LED is off. 1, 0 is 0, 1, 1 is 1. So you can see that by providing both the logic inputs as 1, the output of the AND gate is also 1. So that confirms the true table of the AND gate. Now let's look at the different power supply options on the board. Header 5 provides various power options. First, the EXT pin. It can be used to provide external power input to the board. And the next is 5V and 3.3V pins. These two pins provide 5V and 3.3V respectively. Above 3.3V pin, there are two pins named as OPV plus and OPV minus. These pins can be used to provide positive and negative supply for op amps. When there is no external power connected, OPV plus provides 5 volts and OPV minus provides minus 5 volts. There is also an option to connect an external 9 volt battery to the board. You can use the white 2 pin connector to connect the 9 volt battery. You can connect the battery this way. Observe that there is a jumper below the 2 pin connector. When you connect the 9 volt battery, make sure that the jumper is on the right side. So the jumper position should be towards right. When the jumper setting is towards right, OPV plus gives 9 volts and OPV minus gives minus 9 volts. Please make sure to put the jumper back to the left position when the 9 volt battery is not in use. So this gives a complete overview of the different features available on Prayogic Uno board. Please subscribe to our channel and also share the video with your friends. Thank you for watching the video.